Hi, my name is Megan Blatty. I'm Grace Halverson. And I'm Lydia Durrett. And we're participating in an internship with Dr. Jonathan Steinwan that revolves around ecological grief and anxiety. So climate anxiety or eco-anxiety is defined by the American Psychological Association as a chronic fear of environmental doom. Um, and it's become pretty prominent throughout, throughout the United States in recent years. And a survey by the APA actually revealed that 56% of adults in the United States identify climate change as the most important issues of today, while 68% have actually experienced slight ego anxiety as well as worry about climate change. So our feelings towards environmental degradation and climate change can be overshadowed by scientific figures and sort of understanding those emotions has become a really difficult task for some people. And so we're attempting to create a space for conversation to also build a community around shared experience and channel emotional energy towards the climate crisis. So climate anxiety is also an issue of environmental justice. It affects people all over the planet, but disproportionately impacts those who are experiencing the most drastic effects of climate change. So that includes indigenous people, people in poverty, and those in areas that are vulnerable to drought, rising sea levels, and intense storms. Um, it's also affecting a lot of young people and scientists. It's experienced at the individual as well as the community level. And when left unaddressed, it can become really detrimental, leading to passivity or loss of morale. So we've created six steps to start working through ecological grief. Um, so the first step is to face it. Um, a sense of loss means that we love what we are losing and acknowledging feelings is really important before going on to any sort of action. Um, secondly, um, we want to connect with nature and reconnect with our environmental identity. Aldo Leopold notes that a sense of care comes from a sense of community. So when we spend time with nature, we will feel more compelled to take care of it. So it's really simple, but really important. Um, third, ask, can you believe where we are, which is a quote from the book Bewilderment by Richard Powers. Um, and we want to ask this both in a sense of awe and wonderment and grief and shame at the harm that humans have done to the planet. This helps us acknowledge that collective grief that can really motivate us to take action. Fourth, um, we want to spend time in green, space, great green spaces such as the cornucopia, which is the community garden at our campus. Um, we can plant trees and community gardens and clean up public areas. Um, fifth, um, we want to work towards critical thinking and discussion so we can ask questions like what can we rationally imagine doing in order to find hope? Uh, back to that collective guilt aspect, we created this, so how can we work to fix it? And lastly, um, we want to work towards sustainability and environmental justice focused change at both an individual and systemic levels. So we've brainstormed some events to address eco anxiety. Um, so some of these are hosting discussions about eco-anxiety to share emotions surrounding the planet as well as climate change. Um, we also brainstormed about painting or sculpting a part of the environment, like your favorite part, or um, sculpting how you're feeling about climate change. Um, and then having people write out letters or a manifesto about your um, relationship to the environment and why you care about it. Also planting community gardens or helping out at existing ones in your area as well as partnering with service organizations to help clean up um, green spaces and river areas. And then lastly, getting involved with political organizations, um, running for office and contacting your representatives. So some support and additional resources that we've gathered throughout our um, time in the internship has been Mindfully Green by Stephanie Kaza, Generation Dread by Britt Ray, Bewilderment by Richard Powers, as Grace had mentioned, and then A Field Guide to Climate Anxiety by Sarah Jaquette Ray. And also a fantastic podcast we had listened to was called Facing It by Jennifer Adkinson. And she also has a really phenomenal website with um, ways that people can, like sort of activities that people can participate in to deal with ecological anxiety and grief. And we decided to leave you with a quote from the book Climate Change and Radical Hope by Byron Willis, the article, sorry. Um, and it states, finding a way to flourish in the teeth of the climate crisis requires working for meaningful political change, acting in courageous ways, and looking hard for alternative models of sustainable living. Thank you so much. <laughs>